Hey there guys, today I'm going to be identifying hidden gems in the most played OTP franchise mode style, your live 2020 games. So as you know, one of a GM's prim primary jobs is acquiring talent, and the best way to do it is talent that other teams undervalue, in which you can acquire them pretty easily in trades, or if they're free agents, sign them cheaper than they belong, etc. So this is essentially how the A's have been successful over the past two decades, and it's what the Rays are doing to be so good right now. So why don't we figure out how to do it in OTP? So what I'm going to be doing here is going through a set of players that I think fits these guidelines pretty well in pretty much every game, and hopefully you can see some trends among them and be able to figure out some for yourself, both in your 2020 games, other style games, and of course in your uh, fictional games. So I've got a couple of categories. First is two-way players who are better at the opposite thing that they're rated as. So for example, a pitcher who hits really well or a hitter who pitches really well. Uh, it's fairly common to find a couple of pitchers who hit well every year, but it's fairly uncommon to find hitters who pitch well. So it's gonna be a little bit harder to do that. Then you've got relievers who start, which is a group of players who are undervalued as young starting pitchers usually that are set as relievers usually by their team, but are really starting pitchers and you can acquire more cheaply than they should be as such. Then we have our first baseman type players. For whatever reason, the game really seems to undervalue solid MLB ready first baseman and we've got quite a handful of those to go through. There's also high potential players which are just in general very solid prospects that you can pick up cheaply. Then there's catchers which as you know I am very high on the defensive value of catchers so I've got a list of guys who fit that bill and you can acquire quite easily. Then we've got another category, which just encompasses pretty much everybody else. All right, so we're going to start with our two-way players, and I'm first going to go to Tanner Allison, who is a free agent at the beginning of any of your games, and you should be able to acquire pretty easily. So this is a pitcher who hits. As you can see, he can play first base or either corner outfield spot, probably. He's not super great, but he is slightly above average with his bat. Obviously, he's going to train up pretty good in left field probably, and he can pitch a little bit if you want to leave him as a two-way player, but you pick him up, you train him up a little bit, and he is a good return. You can quickly flip him as a prospect piece or just keep him in your system. Then we've got Adrian Chachon, I believe. I have no idea how to pronounce this guy's name, actually. Oops. That is not what I wanted to do. Adrian Chachon, or Chacon, that's probably closer. He's not quite as good as Allison, but overall he's a solid player. He's actually able to catch, which is interesting. He can probably play third base all right, or first base. So he's another one of these types who you're probably going to just cheaply acquire and then use as a trade chip, or real uh, depth, essentially. Next we have Stetson Allison. Oh, Ali, my bad. These are all free agents. Oh no, this guy's a Red Sox in this game. Okay, so I guess he actually starts out as a Red Sox pitcher. So as you can see, he's actually already trained up, so you pretty much are going to just sign him and then he's immediately available as a trade chip, or trade for him in this case. He's got pretty nice outfield defensive abilities as well. He's definitely going to train up nicely in right field. And overall, just a a nice, good, cheap pickup where you can get quick value. All right, next we're going to go on to our relievers who start. So I'm going to begin with Hunter Harvey, who plays for the Orioles at the start of your games. He is not really a high potential guy. He's more of your, oh no, I desperately need a starter. Who am I going to pick up? This is who you're going to pick up. He's got three pitches and only 40 stamina, so he really is on the edge of who you'd expect to enter your rotation. His control is all right, but his movement is really not where you'd like it to be. The stuff is okay, too. Overall, he's going to pitch pretty much about average. He's not going to throw too many innings. He's somebody you pick up when you have pretty much nobody else to pick up because he's just not that expensive to trade for. 
Then we have Michael Kopech, who is on the White Sox. He's one of several White Sox players that I will be discussing throughout this. As you can see, he's got nice stuff, above average movement despite being a fly ball pitcher, and about average control. Unfortunately, he is disruptive, so he is not really the type of player that you want in your clubhouse, but he is a very talented pitcher you can pick up relatively cheaply. He can slot into your rotation towards the middle, probably your three or four spot. He's got solid stamina as well, so he, unlike Harvey, is actually capable of pitching quite a few innings. Next, we've got his teammate Dylan Cease, who is quite similar. He's not as cheap, he's not as effective, but he's not disruptive. His stamina is a bit lower as well. He actually is more of a reliever than Kopech uh, on account of having two better pitches. But overall, he's not bad value. Cease is one of these guys I wouldn't really recommend picking up as he's not as high value as some of these other names. We've also got Brian Abreu from the Astros. He's not as undervalued as many of these other players as well. And he's not one of the most effective pitchers you're going to see either, also on account of having lower stamina and control. Overall, he doesn't have the best ratings, but the stuff will keep him in the rotation if you desperately need somebody. He's not as cheap as you'd like either. Uh, he's pretty much just a... Everybody else on this list is more expensive than I expected, and he's cheaper. So I guess I'm going to go for him type of player. Sandy Alcantara from the Marlins is also pretty good to pick up. Ooh, I spelled his name wrong. So if you cannot get Alcantara, or Alcatara, Alcantara is your pick here. He's not always really, or set as a reliever, but he's usually quite cheap to pick up. The stamina is not ideal, but he has a pretty deep arsenal. His stuff trains up pretty well. His movement and control both above average or average usually. Another decent pickup to slot immediately into the middle of your rotation and eventually develop into either a trade piece or something a little bit better than that. Next we have Corbin Burns from the Brewers. He's a pretty popular one to pick up as well. He's got alright stamina, nice four pitch mix here, good stuff. His movement and control is usually alright. He can definitely slot into the number three spot of your rotation, sometimes even the number two spot immediately. He's quite cheap to acquire, usually one of the cheapest of these players, and he is definitely one of the more effective guys you can get. There's also Ranger Suarez of the Phillies. He's one of these guys who really is a last-ditch attempt if you desperately need somebody. Now, the good thing about him is he's got a four-pitch mix, good control, and he's cheap. So the movement isn't ideal, the stuff isn't ideal, but he can pitch a couple of innings for you, and he can just be that bottom-of-the-rotation cheap guy when you have a spot that desperately needs feeling. Now, Michael Baez of the Padres is probably not going to come cheap in many of your saves, but if he is, he's a nice pickup. His control is usually much higher than this. This is probably just my scout not being accurate. His stuff is quite solid. He'll slot well into the rotation. The stamina is all right. The movement's usually all right. And overall, Michael Baez can pitch probably towards the back of your rotation, but develops a little bit and then can be towards the middle. He often increases in value after you acquire him and can be traded in year two for much better value. And now for the guy that I think is probably the best value out of all of this group, Alex Reyes. He's got a nice four pitch mix from the Cardinals. Control is usually a little bit better than this. The movements usually could. Overall, he's slightly above average in all the categories with solid stuff. He can usually be your number two or three starter at his peak, and he costs diddly squat to pick up, so definitely one of the better values. Now I'm going to stay within the Diamondbacks for this guy, Paven Smith. We're going on to our first baseman now. So Smith overall has a pretty solid profile. He's got lower home run power, but everything else is usually above average. His eye and control gives him a pretty solid base to work with, and then his contact abilities are pretty solid as well. His defense is also pretty good, as you can see, 65 grade at first base. He's not good enough really to play any other position unless you maybe need him in left field, but he is definitely one of the better cheap first basemen you can get. We're going to continue with the first baseman and Ryan Mountcastle, who can really hit for gap power. His gap power is usually much higher than this, and I'm sure this is a scouting inaccuracy as well. I've never seen it this low. You're going to see a lot of doubles and occasionally a triple or two from Mount Castle. His contact's also fairly high. I and avoid Ks aren't the best, and he's not your typical 
high value first baseman. He also costs a bit more than some of the other players, but he is still good value. And the fact he's trained up a little bit in third base and left field helps a bit, although he's really not ideal to put at either position over other people. Although in this save, it looks like you could probably plug him in left field. We're going back to the Marlins for Lewin Diaz, who is probably the worst and worst value out of all the players in the first base group. Like Smith, he's got pretty solid defense, but he is a contact guy. He's usually got solid power and contact, but he's pretty much average all around. He's not going to add too much value to you, but he is, if the other guys are tougher than you'd expect to pick up, a nice grab. There's also Alec Bohm of the Phillies, who is actually not cheap at all, but he is nonetheless quite the value simply because he's a very good hitter all across the board and has very nice first base defense. In some saves, he actually can slot into third base if you need him to. And really, uh, just another one of these. He's definitely the most talented of this group, but again, by far the most expensive. Now, Evan White of the Mariners is probably the most well-known value in this game. He's got a nice bat all around, usually has lower home run power than this, but the contact gap power I and avoid caves seem about right for him. He famously has some of the best first base defense in the game. He's also got very nice outfield defense, and if he were right-handed, he probably could train up nicely at third base as well. Overall, you're looking at a very good first baseman or left fielder. He can probably play right as well. So yeah, Evan White, he's really good. Okay, now we're moving on to our guys who are high potential all around. I'm going to head back to the Orioles, and we're going to look at closer Tanner Scott. Now, he's got lower control, which is not really my favorite thing to see from a closer prospect, but the movement and stuff combined still keeps him very effective. I mean, very few guys have this type of profile where there's such high movement and stuff. Overall, he's going to walk a few guys, but they're hardly ever going to come around to score, and he's going to be an effective relief option for you. He can immediately slot in effectively, and as he trains up, he will, of course, become good enough to close games. We're going to stick with the Orioles for the next guy, Zach Pop. He's another relief prospect. In some saves, he's better than others. This one's probably his weak, one of his weaker ones. But he's another extreme ground baller with a solid stuff mix. Overall, Pop is going to be able to end up likely towards the middle of your bullpen a little bit higher than that uh, he's one of the weaker relievers in this category i'm going to be going over but he is definitely a very cheap pickup and can add depth to your organization now we're going to the red sox and checking out jeter downs who seems to get traded all the time and will probably get traded again once you start up your save the red sox trade him very cheaply and while he almost never really turns into anything that valuable just give him a little bit of time in the major league level or at, high, or at the higher minor leagues to train up, and he will reward you as a trade chip. The defense is pretty good here. His base running is also pretty good. The batting profile is slightly above average. Overall, just an okay prospect. We're going to stick with the second baseman and head back to the White Sox. Nick Madrigal, he's another really popular pickup. He pretty much never strikes out. The only reason that the avoid K's is only 80 grade is because I have not turned on show higher than uh, 80 ratings. It's probably up around uh, 90 or 95. He gets a lot of singles. He will hit for some gap power and draw a couple walks. Base running is good. His defense is pretty good as well. Madrigal overall quite the value. He's not too expensive from the White Sox, but really it is just about his ability because he is one of the better second basemen in the game. Now, this might surprise you, but the Rockies have relief pitchers who are quite good to pick up, one of whom is Tommy Doyle. I'm sure his ratings are actually better than this, and my scout's just skimping on him a little bit. He's got a pretty solid three-pitch three mix, really nice stamina for a starting relief prospect. Uh, the movement and control are usually a little bit above average as well. Sometimes he can start. I seriously doubt he's actually capable of it in many saves, but occasionally you will see him actually reach that level. You're really going to pick him up as a reliever though, not as a starter. But he is cheap from the Rockies, and you can get him and his teammate at the same time, Ben Bowden. 
He's another relief prospect. He's got pretty solid three pitch mix as well. He's a high stuff, good control pitcher. The movement's going to be a little bit skimpy in some of your saves, but overall is going to be better than my scout. Yeah, this is probably closer to what you're looking at for Bowden. Uh, he's going to be a very effective player overall, can probably slot towards the upper middle part of your bullpen. Okay, now we're heading to the Angels to check out Luis Rangifro, who is a second baseman, I believe. Yep, so he's got decent defense just in general. He's capable of playing third base as well if you need him to. The contact ability is solid. His eye is solid. This is just another one of these uh, on-base percentage, top-of-the-order, second baseman types. You're going to see a lot of these. Um, he's cheap to acquire. He can place, like I said, second or third base for your team. And overall, just a solid player. We're keeping with the relievers next and heading to the Brewers with Devin Williams. So the NL Rookie of the Year in real life is actually fairly well rated in OOTP as well. The hindrance is that he has low control, but the stuff and movement is usually very, or the movement's usually average and the stuff is usually very high. He costs very little to pick up, so he's still quite the good option. Uh, he's not going to close games to, for you, likely on account of his control. But he is still definitely a nice high leverage option, potentially, when his stuff develops. Speaking of relievers, I know, you just can't get enough of them. Fernando Romero of the Twins is another interesting option to pick up. Overall, he has some of the highest movement and control of a relief pitcher in the game. While he only has one truly strikeout pitch in his slider, Overall, the package is so good that you can confidently use him as your closer, and he is going to be one of the cheaper top-end relievers to acquire on account of his lower stuff. So even if that changeup doesn't come along, you're still looking at a very solid package overall. And if it does, then wow. I mean, Romero is definitely a guy you want your eye on as soon as you boot up your game as a future potential closer. Another really popular high value player is Cabrian Hayes, who you're probably going to see just shopping around your useless junk when you boot up a game, simply because the Pirates don't seem to like him nearly as much as they should. Overall, his profile is pretty much like this. His power is usually a little higher. My scout, yeah, this is probably a little bit more accurate, but he's going to have nice third base defense. He can usually play right field as well. Yep, or left field, of course. You can slot him in at first, you can slot him in at third. He pretty much he's a corner player. The batting profile overall is pretty solid. He's going to be a decent player, productive player, and he can fill in some of the more expensive spots to fill in very cheaply. So, I mean, it's tough to find a third baseman, but Hayes is there. We're going to head to the Mariners, who have quite a few players as well. They've got Sam Delplane, who's a reliever, if I can spell his name right. It's Delaplane. Okay, that would explain it. He is a relief prospect from the Mariners as well. Uh, he's probably better than this. But in general, he's got high stuff, high movement, high control, overall solid package, higher stamina. He's going to be uh, one of your better options. And overall, you're going to see a lot of relievers like this game's Sam Delaplane, who are very cheap to get, but this profile is going to assist your bullpen big time like this is going to save you two to three million at least a year from free agent signings if you pick these guys up as prospects anyways moving on junior fernandez of the cardinals is likely one of the best if not the best really prospects in the game he's got very high stuff and above average movement and control in most saves nice three pitch mix which is of course uncommon from a reliever of his caliber uh, he's going to look a lot like uh, your one of your better relievers, as I was saying. Um, he's quite cheap to get from the Cardinals as well. You can pick him up in a package with Alex Reyes. Yeah, so just another value guy. And we're going to stick with one MLB reliever who is usually cheap to acquire, Jose Alvarado. You can immediately step in as your closer if you need, but ideally you'd like the control develop a little bit more as well. He has that same baby Tanner Scott profile, except he does have higher control. So his overall ceiling is approximately the same thanks to having the control. 
Uh, he's got a nice three-pitch mix. Definitely going to be a good reliever for you. And he will close out this group. So now we're going to go on to the catchers. We'll start with Tyler Flowers of the Braves. So he doesn't start for them. They usually like to get rid of him pretty quickly. And he is a three-star catcher because his offensive profile is pretty solid. I don't think he's actually this good. Usually his catcher ability is a little lower. I think my head scout's a little more accurate here, actually. He's got very nice ability and above average arm, which makes him a gem defensively behind the plate. Of course, you can acquire him for next to nothing, and the fact that he can hit at all really just blossoms his value. Definitely going to be a catcher you want your eye on. Now, Martin Maldonado is another one of these type of guys who is not getting started by his team. He's got lower ability, but a much higher arm. His batting profile is about the same overall in terms of the quality. He's going to give you likely a little worse. Uh, he's not excellent by any stretch of the imagination, but like Flowers, he's very cheap. Now, Austin Hedges, this is probably the guy you're going to pick up to be your starting catcher and probably the best catcher value in the game, if not the best value overall. He's got very high ability and arm, which gives him excellent defensive ability as a catcher. The offensive profile is bad, but not atrocious. He's going to bat like an average catcher, pretty much. You're going to get a ton of value from him simply because he is so good defensively. There is no better fielder in this game. So, yeah, get hedges. Now, my personal favorite is Jeff Mathis, who is not even in the Major League team for the Texas Rangers. He's got one of the better fielding abilities in the game as well, with a good ability and a solid arm. His hitting profile is obviously complete garbage, and he's not good enough to start. Well, he can start for you if you absolutely need it, but he really is likely to be your backup because the, the hitting is bad. Now, you'll put him behind hedges, ideally, and... Uh, yeah, you hopefully get the Rangers to retain some of his contract because he's a little pricey. But he costs literally nothing to pick up, so when you need a catcher, Mathis is a solid backup. Now, if you want a better Mathis, Joseph doesn't usually cost much either. He's pretty much the same defense, better batter. He can back up as well for you. He can start too, like Mathis, if you need him to. But yeah, ideally, he's just a backup. Now we're going on to a draft prospect here, the first we're looking at so far, I think. Yep, I think this is our first draft prospect, Drew Romo. So he is usually a little bit difficult to sign, but overall, when you get to the draft, Romo's going to slip a couple rounds further than he should. So he has one of the better defensive abilities in the game. And, of course, he's got a pretty average batting profile. So this makes him a really valuable catcher. Uh, he's going to not hurt you at the dish. He can probably bat 6th or 7th in a good lineup. Uh, in a really good lineup, he's going to bat 8th or ninth. But, nonetheless, really good player overall. Definitely want to be at least have your eye on him when the 2020 draft rolls around. All right, so now we're moving into the other category. There's not really a theme for these guys. They're just guys I've seen who are really, really good values to pick up. So we're going to start with Shohei Otani. Now, if he were just a right fielder or just a pitcher, he is not somebody you want to get. But as combined right fielder and pitcher, he is an absolute bestial monster type guy. So he's got... Uh, basically a Ronald Acuna Jr. batting profile with that really high contact and home run power. He's going to strike out, but overall he's going to offset it with his high BABIP. He's going to hit for some gap power and draw some walks as well, and he's not bad on the base pass. Let's also not forget that he's actually a good fielder when he trains up. He goes up to like 55, 60, maybe better than that. I forgot to enable commissioner mode, but he usually trains up to a very solid right fielder with that very nice arm. So as a right fielder, he's already one of your better options in the game, and he's not going to cost you quite... Well, he's going to cost you, like, what he would for just being a right fielder. But he is, of course, a pitcher, too. So as a pitcher, he's got some very high stuff on account of his 100-plus velocity. His movement and control are usually about average. You're not going to see too much from him there. But he can pitch as your ace when you need him to, because he is so 
good. Now, on a really good team, he's probably your number two pitcher, but he can be an ace. I mean, Otani is one of the better pitchers in the game and, of course, one of the better right fielders. So while the profiles aren't perfect and he's not one of the he's not your ideal pickup as either individually, the fact that he really only costs what you'd normally be paying for one and can fill in both is really good, especially when you're a National League team and you can have him bat as a pitcher. Uh, you definitely want to pick him up. Well, of course, you're assuming you're not turning on the DH at the start. But Otani really is a must-have for every team. And considering that he's just entering his arbitration, he's cheap as well. You can hand him an extension while he's still affordable, and there you go. All right, now we're going on to Jose Iglesias of the Orioles. He is a very high defensive ability shortstop, which is exactly what you're looking for. He's got an okay offensive profile. He's going to strike out very little, and he's not going to hit the ball too hard, and he's not going to draw walks. But still, he's not going to harm you too much. And he's pretty cheap, too. He's only a couple million between your two years, and it's a team option on the second one as well. But overall, it's the glove that you're paying for with Iglesias. Now, he's not expensive to pick up, and he's not expensive to pay. So he's probably one of your go-to options as a shortstop. Now, this guy is one of the better values, I think, uh, in the game. He's basically one of the first basemen that we were talking about earlier, except he's an outfielder already. So this is, yeah, the OSA is more accurate than my scout here. This is Luis Gonzalez. And he has really good eye and avoid Ks. His gap power is usually nice and his contact is nice. The defense is pretty good. I think my, yeah, this is probably closer to his actual defensive values. Uh, he is going to be a top of the order guy with his speed and contact abilities. And of course his eye. And he could play left field or right field really, either corner pretty solidly. And he costs next to nothing to pick up. You can just throw him into one of your other White Sox trades and they probably won't ask for anything in addition to get him. Or here's another cheap player to pick up that can fill in for your team if you really need him to. Now, uh, Albert Almora is definitely not what pops in your mind when you think cheap, good center fielders. But he is cheap and he is competent. He's above average defensively and it's honestly not easy to find really good defensive center fielders on the cheap side at the start of your game. But what he does have is an okay batting profile, an okay defensive profile, and an okay base running profile. And he's not expensive either. Plus, the Cubs don't really charge you anything. So if you're desperately in need of a center fielder, Elmore is probably the guy you want to turn to if you're looking on the cheaper end. Tyler Freeman of the Indians is another one of those second basemen with the leadoff type profile. He's usually not this good. This OSA is probably overrated. No, he might actually be this good. Okay. So Freeman has really good eye and avoid Ks in most of his saves, but the contact is usually a little lower along with the gap power. Now the really th big thing you like about Freeman, and I don't have my personality thing turned on, but it's his personality. Oh, he's a good base runner too, but he has pretty much everything in the green that you can possibly have. He is built to improve himself. And he's currently set as a shortstop, but once he trains up at second base, he will be a solid fielder. Now we're going to go back to the Astros and find Michael Brantley. So Brantley is one of your contact hitters. He can play left field still, and he's a decent base runner as well. As you can see, he's actually added about three and a half war for the last two years. Two to three war is about what you can expect from him. He's not super cheap contract-wise, but if you can get the Astros to retain a little bit or if you're a bigger market team, he's no big problem. He can really help out your team overall. He can bat lead off if you want uh, with his contact abilities and solid player. Now, Kyle Isabel, or Isbell of the Royals is, um, so he is a very solid fielder in either left or center, and he has a good batting profile all around. Really, the thing you're looking at here is the fact that he's super cheap. The Royals don't really charge you anything, and he's a productive player, which therefore makes him worth getting. 
Now we're going to stick with the Royals and grab Nicky Lopez, who is their starting second baseman, I believe. You can train up at third as well if you need, but ideally is going to be playing second for you. The contact profile is really nice here. He doesn't strike out much. I mean, he's just another one of these second basemen. Uh, Leadoff skills, and yeah, that's him. Next, we're going to look at Drew Rasmussen of the Brewers. He's another one of your... Or Ramusen, no, Rasmussen. He's another one of your cheap starting pitching options. Ideally, you don't want him to start because he is below average movement and control, but the stuff keeps him afloat, and he can ultimately pitch for your team in a moment of need. Now we're going to move on to Luis Guillorme of the Mets. He is one of the better known, not quite secrets as well really excellent defense he can play second base or shortstop but you're probably picking him up to play shortstop for your team his contact is all right as well he can get on base a little bit and he's not going to hit for any kind of power but that's all right because his value really does come from his glove now the problem with Giorme is that the Mets often do know his value and he can't he's more often expensive to pick up than he is cheap so you got to watch out for that we're going to stick with second baseman but head over to the Phillies and check out Scott Kingry. So Kingry is actually extremely versatile. He can technically play pretty much any position. Uh, he could ideally slot into second base or left field, though. Uh, Kingry's profile is based around his contact skills, so he's got higher contact and gap power. He's also on a cheap, affordable contract, not too dissimilar from Evan White. Uh, overall, though, he is not quite worth his contract, but the Phillies really want to get rid of him. So much like Evan White, you can cheaply acquire him and often get them to retain some of his contract as well. little bonus, Kingery is actually popular, or locally popular, and has a really good personality. Okay, and now we're going to go to the, another uh, NL East team and check out Chris Archer of the Pirates. So... Because the Pirates are such a cheap team, they pretty much refuse to pay Archer the remainder of his salary and will dump him onto you pretty much free of charge. Archer is a very capable number 2 slash 3 pitcher. He's got higher stamina, his stuff is usually quite good, his control is above average most of the time, and his movement's about average. Uh, he's got two cheers, which are actually much cheaper than you expect a pitcher of his caliber to be paid. So he's a good value pickup if you need a starter at the top of your rotation, and you can afford to pay him really at all. We're going to stick with the Pirates and check out Gerard Dyson, who is one of the higher defensive center fielders in the game. So as you can see, he's got very nice range, which is exactly what you want to see from him. You can pinch run too if you're keeping him on your bench. And his batting profile is actually quite solid. He can get on base a decent amount of the time, and while he won't hit for power, he's definitely not going to hurt you too much. But really, it's the glove you're paying for if you're getting Dyson. And we'll now go to a very similar player in Billy Hamilton of the Giants, who is going to be one of the better value uh, center fielders in the game. So he's got a similar profile with the bat, albeit with worse on base skills overall. He's uh, about the same base running as well. Quite good there. So he's probably going to be your number nine batter as he isn't that good with pretty much anything. But defensively, he is a legendary center fielder. Probably the best you're going to be able to get. That 75 grand range is really something to look out for in your top players. And Hamilton is definitely not tough to get from the Giants. Now, we're going to go to another one, Braden Bishop of the Mariners. So, he is probably a throw-in for your Evan White trade. He can hit, actually, much better than Dyson and uh, Hamilton. I think OSA is a little bit low on his abilities. Let's see if my head's... Nope, neither of them really like him. But he's got that 75-grade range as well, so he is going to be another one of your elite defensive center fielders. Sometimes he's actually cheaper than Hamilton for some reason. But overall, his batting profile makes him not going to hurt you too much, and his defense is definitely worth getting. We're heading to the Rays for their only high-value play. Well, okay, I'm going to talk about Wander Franco in a minute, but Brendan McKay, I wouldn't really categorize McKay as high-value either. He's on the border, and so is Franco, really. He's going to cost you about as much as Otani, and he's less valuable on both sides of the ball. So as a pitcher, he is 
capable of being a number two slash three guy. He's got nice stuff, but the arsenal isn't as well-rounded as you'd like. The movement and control are, of course, only average, but he does have good stamina, which is a plus. Now with the bat, he's about an average first baseman most of the time. I think he doesn't usually have gap power this high, but he can play actually a uh, left field or maybe right field as well, but he's not going to be too good. I, regardless of where you put him, he's not an ideal guy there. He's just there because he is okay. So uh, if you have two spots that need feel, filling, one on defense and one on offense, McKay is okay. But I would honestly rather point you in the direction of two individual players because the Rays do want so much for him and he isn't that good overall. Now we're going to look at Wander Franco, who is the single highest hitting talent in the game, no debate, and yeah. So this is probably because I, once again, have ratings greater than 80 disabled right now. Uh, he has better than 80 grade contact most of the time. Franco has insane uh, batting average abilities, and the fact that his lower things, which are his gap power, no, his gap power is usually higher than this. The fact that his lower abilities, which are his home run power and eye, are still well above average just points out how talented he is with the bat. He's going to be usually about a 6-8 to eight war hitter for you. And if you put him at third base, where he is very solid defensively, usually 65-70 to 70 grade, uh, Franco is going to shine for your team. And really, I mean, he's tough to pick up, but if you get him, he's going to pay you back. Now, I talked about um, Michael Brantley earlier, who is a cheap, easy-to-get, uh, high-contact guy who can help your team out now. Howie Kendrick is a better version of this. So he's only $4 million in the probably one year you have him because he's likely to opt out. But he's got a good personality, really nice contact ability, solid overall. He's probably a first baseman or a designated hitter for your team, but his ability ability to hit and the cheapness both on his contract and to trade really does make him worth picking up. So now we're turning over to the free agents and these guys are mostly going to be prospects so let's take a look at Greg Pickett who is the best free agent prospect available. So he's a first baseman with really high defense. He's yeah I'll say he's better accuracy. He's got good power and an okay eye most of the time and his contact is going to be eh but again, if you can pick up a prospect of pretty much any meaningful caliber for free, why wouldn't you? So now we've got Nicholas Pierre, who is a lot like Pickett in the fact that he is a prospect you can pick up at no cost. He's probably slotting in as a left fielder, and as you can see, he's got a nice on-base profile as well. He's not going to be too elite defensively at any of the outfield positions, but overall he's just a good value pick. And now we're going to head over to the Major League pieces. Devin Marrero is another high... Did I spell his name wrong? I must have spelled his name wrong in the thing. Because that's how I spelled his name. Oh, uh, great. Here we go. Okay, here's Devin Marrero. So as you can see, he's got basically your Nolan Arenado defensive profile. When you train him up at shortstop, he is one of the better shortstops available. He's got a decent batting profile as well. He's not a bad base runner either. And overall, he can add a lot of value to your team as a starter even. And at worst, he's a really good backup. So I would definitely recommend picking up Marrero. He's not going to be expensive. He can start for you if you need him to. Another guy who can start for you, Milky Cabrera. Think of him as a worse version of Michael Brantley, who is a free agent and therefore cheaper. Now, He's not your ideal option, but he can technically play left field or be your designated hitter. And his contact is solid, which is, again, what you're looking for in a cheap player. We're going to head on to a pitcher who I really don't like, Luis Gaharza, or Luis Gohara. Ugh. So he usually has lower control and slightly higher movement. Let's see if my scout... Nope. Okay. But he is a three-pitch guy who can fill into your rotation if you are really, really desperate. He is probably a reliever and a long reliever at that. You're going to have him stay out of your lever high leverage situations, and he is pretty much a last-ditch desperation grab. 
We're going to stick with the pitchers here, the starting pitchers, that is, for uh, Kyvius Sampson, I believe is how his name is pronounced. Again, he has lower control, which is not ideal, and he's probably a minor league starting pitcher for you. But he's an Iron Man, so he is a good depth option, and he has a nice four-pitch balanced mix with high stamina. So again, if you're desperate, this guy is probably one of the depth options you can turn to. All right, now for a reliever, Addison Reed. So Reed overall has really high control in most of your saves and about average movement and stuff. Uh, he's not your ideal reliever, but he is cheap again and can eat innings for you and your MLB team, help you win some more right now. So I would recommend picking him up if you are a reliever short and don't want to go through trades. Now, Steven Oker, another reliever, he's basically Reed, but a little bit worse. His control is a little lower, his stuff and movement is about the same, and that's pretty much where we're at. All right, so now we're going to look at some draft prospects. We're going to start with one of my favorites, Daniel Montgomery. Uh, one of my friends actually pointed him out to me. He said as a second baseman in the 2020 draft, which is really a shame, but as you can see, his batting profile is pretty bad. He's below average everywhere. He's not going to hit for contact at all. He's very mediocre. He's going to be a bottom of the order guy at best, but he has 90 great outfield range. The reason it's not showing 90 again is because I have um, ratings greater than 80 disabled right now, but he trains up to 95 to 100 defense in center field which is value I can't even begin to explain to you guys, and I haven't even started testing it yet. So all I have to say is Daniel Montgomery is available in the the very bottom rounds of the draft. You can usually get him in like the 25th to 30th round range, even later than that sometimes. I wouldn't recommend waiting that long, but you can. I would recommend picking him up around round 15, and he will transform into your starting center fielder very quickly. So just get Montgomery. All right, and now we're going to have a look at some guys who are two-way players that are better at their reverse. So we got Dan. I don't think any of these guys are particularly good, by the way, so don't be prepared to be overwhelmed. So we've got Daniel Wolgamuth, I think, or Nate Wolgamuth. Ugh. He is actually not a terrible pitching prospect, but he is a very solid batting prospect. So he's likely going to be playing probably first base or left slash right field he's actually got some training in both left and right field he's got a little bit of power and a pretty average batting profile overall so we're gonna hit the next one Brady Drost Brady Drost Dorst maybe no okay well I guess I'm just gonna show you guys how to find uh, your draft prospects of this talent. So we've got, we're going to first set it to only pitchers being shown. Then we're going to go to batting potential and sort by contact potential. And also notice how I have batting ratings here on the side. So this is going to show me my pitchers in the draft and it's going to show me the better hitting ones. So we've also got this Kenyan Yovan guy who is on my list. Uh, as you can see, he's got ratings at first base as well, defensively. He can play the outfield as well. He's got an above average bat all around, and he is going to be a higher value pickup. Brady Drost, where are you? Well, it seems that Brady Drost has just disappeared from the world. Oh, wait, here he is. Anyways, as you can see, he's got... Um, Solid outfield defense, actually. He can probably train up at either corner very well. And an okay bat. Uh, Alex Green is another one I wanted to look at. Actually, you know what? The specific guys don't really matter. You can just see how I'm getting here. This is how I'd recommend you do it as well. Sort your pitchers by batting potential and your batters by pitching potential. And you'll be able to identify gems you can pick up in later rounds who will really help out your team and get you nice value. So it doesn't look like there's any batters really worth picking up as pitchers, but in your draft, there might be. So that's going to do it for me, guys. I think that's pretty much every single player 
that you can get a really good value. So hopefully you can identify some of these guys and find similar players in all of your saves. I hope you guys can get some good value.